The pericapsular nerve group or PANG block is an injection of local anesthetic along the brim of the pelvis designed to anesthetize the small articular nerve fibers that innervate the anterior medial capsule and hip joint. The idea behind this technique is that it provides good analgesia for hip pain and hip related procedures while avoiding any motor block of the lower limb. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy and rationale for this block and go through the block technique in detail. The iliacus and psoas muscles originate in the pelvis and cross the brim of the pelvis to insert on the lesser trochanter. If we remove these, we see the pelvic brim with two prominent humps, the iliopubic eminence and the anterior inferior iliac spine. These will be important sonographic landmarks. The inguinal ligament stretches from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle, and within this compartment we find the femoral vessels and the iliacus muscle and psoas tendon. The femoral nerve is here too, and we want to avoid blocking that to prevent quads weakness. Instead, we're going to focus on several smaller nerves that supply the hip joint. First, we have the articular branches of the femoral that take off proximal to the inguinal ligament and run deep to the iliacus muscle. An articular branch of the obturator travels laterally from the obturator foramen, and the accessory obturator nerve travels over the pelvic brim from the medial side. All of these contribute sensory fibers to the capsule and articular structures. During a PENG block, a needle is advanced from the lateral aspect and contact is made with the superior pubic ramus just lateral to the psoas tendon. Cadaver studies have shown that injectate here will spread along the pelvic brim as well as in a caudal direction along the joint capsule. Note that the iliacus muscle separates the injection point from the femoral nerve, so no motor fibers are blocked with this technique, provided the local anesthetic is deposited deep to the muscle. The ultrasound probe is placed over the inguinal crease, as pictured here, in the same orientation as the crease. This should result in an ultrasound image like this. Here we see the superior pubic ramus, with the iliopubic eminence rising on the medial side, and the anterior inferior iliac spine rising on the lateral we can clearly see the iliacus muscle and the psoas tendon. Sometimes the bony anatomy is not immediately obvious, and there are two maneuvers to get to the right spot. First, slide the probe distally along the thigh until the spherical head of the femur is visualized. From there, it's a very slight tilt or shift back cephalad to get to the pubic ramus. Alternatively, if the ASIS is easily palpable, you can start by scanning for that bony landmark and then following the pelvic brim in an inferior medial direction. A needle is advanced from the lateral aspect until contact with the pubic ramus is made just lateral to the psoas tendon. A small injection of saline is administered to confirm the needle tip is not intramuscular or in the tendon. Following this, a total of 15 to 20 mils of dilute local anesthetic are administered. These are small nerves, and you don't need highly concentrated local anesthetic to get a good effect. How does the PENG stack up? Well, while it's a relatively new technique, it seems to provide roughly the same analgesic value as the super inguinal fascia iliaca block, making it an attractive option for analgesia following hip fracture and for procedures such as hip arthroplasty and arthroscopy. It's an easy block to teach and learn, particularly because the endpoint is bony contact rather than a nuanced intermuscular fascial plane. Here are some PANG block tips. First, in many slim patients, a linear transducer is sufficient to visualize the sonoanatomy. However, a curved transducer is preferable as it allows for a wider field of view, including the AIIS, the IPE, and the femoral vessels and nerve. Often when first attempting to inject, there can be a lot of resistance, and this can be due to the needle tip being tightly opposed to the periosteum or the psoas tendon. Withdrawing the needle very slightly often relieves this resistance and allows the injectate to flow under the muscle. On the flip side, make sure the needle tip is truly deep to the muscle. The occasional reports of quads weakness following peng block seem to correspond to an inadvertent intramuscular injection. This is another reason to use dilute local anesthetic just in case some local ends up within the muscle itself. Finally, unlike the fascia iliaca block, the PENG provides no analgesia to the skin of the thigh. For hip surgery, we'll combine the PENG with a lateral femoral cutaneous nerve block to provide skin coverage. It's nice to be able to address the bony pain and the cutaneous pain without any muscle weakness.